Welcome to the Selling in the Motor Trade podcast in association with Simcoe Training. This is the weekly podcast where we share best practice tips and ideas on how to sell more cars, improve your service department, and generally put more profit into your dealership or dealer group. I'm your host, Simon Bogert. Now, some of you probably already know me as Skippy. I want to start by saying thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Selling in the Motor Trade. Now, listen, firstly, a big thank you. We've had the most growth in the last three months than we have in this podcast for a long time. It just keeps on growing and growing and growing. So listen, do me a favor. Everyone on podcast says, uh, go and subscribe to it. Uh, most people subscribe to it, so you get this all the time there, okay? But if you're one of the people who haven't done it, just go and subscribe to it. We love you to comment, um, and we're getting so much good information. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, okay? And that's what this podcast is all about. Now, today, I'm joined again with Andrew Clark. Andrew Clark is our Operations Director for Simcoe Training, and we're going to be talking about the difference between time and money in the motor trade. So, Andrew, welcome aboard. How are you, sir? Yeah, really good. Thanks, Simon. How are you? Very good. Very good. Right. Now, the reason for this episode is we were talking about uh, promoting our open course. Um, so many times, um, most of our clients will know that we deal with manufacturers and dealer groups that are, quite frankly, big enough to afford for us to go in and do a program. And all the time we get lots of people saying, I've got one dealership where uh, just one or two dealerships and we can't afford to send people away for a long period of time. Okay. Or we can't afford to get you guys in to do bespoke training. So uh, we run open training courses where there's lots of people from lots of different places there. And we're talking about the challenges that some of these small dealers have had. And Andrew quite rightly said, it's not the challenges that the small dealers have got. The whole motor industry has got these challenges. And Andrew, let's talk about that challenge, time and money. What's the real challenge that dealers yeah, are finding there? I think the, the biggest takeaway I've had from you know, talking with some of the industry leaders and some franchise directors and bigger groups is that when they're recruiting, they're changing the whole philosophy from you know, that normal five and a half, six day work and week and guys who want to be in there at 8 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock at night, and they're just smashing through deals. But since, since COVID, there just seems to be a complete mm -hmm. shift. And now people are now going, oh, I don't want to work weekends. I don't want to work a five-day week. And they're really having a big challenge around recruiting the right people, the right mentality. Um, and then on the back of that, they're then saying that they're struggling with that kind of training element of it because they, they don't know where these guys are coming in from. And there seems to be just a, a bit of a dying kind of breed of these real hungry salespeople that maybe traditionally would have in the industry who would w work that six day week. He yeah. would be coming on the days off. And, you know, I, I remember I had a great sales exec who worked for me called Grant. Now, Grant was phenomenal. Um, but every day Grant had off, he'd come in, he'd have two deals done. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd come in on Thursday morning, go, can you go and reserve those? Two? Oh, you'd be getting the telephone calls. And I just think that's starting to die out. I think the hunger has gone and people now would rather have that extra day off. Yeah. Than that it, little bit of money back it. Let me ask you a question. Where, where are we going to get people from to work in the industry going forward? Does agency change that? Uh, what are your views? Yeah, I, I think agency is going to have a huge impact on it. Um, and from, from my opinion, and we've been in, in and out of dealerships, um, you know, over the last few months and we've talked to people around the industry. Um, I've got a number of friends who've been looking at cars recently mm -hmm. and they said the journey into the Mercedes-Benz world, uh, when we talk about agency, is not what they expected. Really? Okay. Yeah, they, they were very nice, very polite, um, but just, they weren't even asked for the business. They just advised them about the car. There was just no, there was no kind of desire to try and close them or get them down a process. It was, the car can do this, the car can do that, and it'll be this. And if you want to have a look online, just go have a look online. And it, just no no real desire to try and close them. And then my my recent experience, um, I know we had a conversation this morning about electric cars. Um, yeah. I, had a, I had a very brief look at the Ford Mustang Mach-E at, at mm -hmm. a dealership. And that's Ford running that through the agency model. And the sales executives wasn't interested. 
it's quite interesting. You you might remember a, a great friend of the show, uh, James Vortman. He's yeah. the um, CEO of the Australian Automotive Dealers Association. And he said one of the things the Mercedes dealers, or sorry, I'll go back, the Honda dealers first, because agency uh, in Honda went in Australia about three years ago now from memory. He said there was definitely a talent drain, right. okay? Because the hungry salesperson, the guy that you could rely on for 30 cars this month because George's going to get me those 30 cars, he said they just left those franchises and we're going to other franchises. But yeah. again, if you are an investor listening to this, you're going down the agency route, do they need to pay salespeople like they used to pay salespeople? Or can they actually employ people that were at Curry's? Um, people working at John Lewis. Um, I, I can remember um, for recruitment, now I'm going back in 95 when I come over here working in that Nissan dealership in Uh Roger Cunliffe, my first uh, dealer principal. Hi, Roger. How are you, sir? But when I, when I first come over here in 95, okay, and Roger Cunliffe, my first DP, I was looking for good staff. And he said, go to the local mobile phone salesperson. Go to local Curry's or Comet, if you remember that store in the olden yeah. days. And he said, find someone who's good at selling that that TV or that whatever you're looking to buy, okay? And say, hey, listen, why don't you come and sell cars? That way, you're going to earn more money. You're probably earning double what you're earning there. And we give you a company car. And it was a great, great recruitment. And I've got to tell you, when I was in that Nissan dealership, I think that's what we did for all the recruitment. We didn't use recruitment companies. Does that work now, Andrew? Does that still work? Or are we not as attractive as working out of John Lewis? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I think, I mean, if I go back to my mini days and work for Mini UK, we, we yeah. had a really successful mini franchise. Um, we'd actually go and recruit the person from the restaurant that gave us fantastic levels of service. Yeah, yeah. We give, we, no, we went and recruit our product geniuses from the hotels where you go in and mm -hmm. the person go above and beyond because actually... Um, let's go back to that people buy from people now listen to lots of podcasts and lots of our guests actually talk about that it's yep. that, that it's a personal touch it's the communication um i think alistair horseman spoke about this on the last podcast uh, people buy from people and if you can yep. deliver a fantastic level of customer service well that's where we start to recruit it wasn't for the sales element because we thought we could coach and mentor and train that yeah we can't coach the attitude mm. And yeah, yeah. that's where we went with it. So I think there's a difference. Um, and are we as attractive? I think maybe we are. But mm. these people aren't as hungry as the guys that maybe we used to have from the Curries and the Comet and the car phone warehouse. Yeah, can I play devil's advocate now? Again, I want to go back in time, okay? Um, I went to a uh, – I was running a training course. I can't even remember where it was. And we're talking about process and the importance of a process. And I, I still believe that's as important today as it ever has been and will be. And we're talking about this. And we went into a Kentucky Fried Chicken or a McDonald's. I think it was a Kentucky Fried Chicken. And the lady there was brilliant, okay? Because we had, I don't know, 15 of us or something like that. I don't know what happened. I, that was right. Lunch never uh, turned up or something like that. There was some... Um, something went wrong with the lunch so i said come on we'll go to this local kentucky fried chicken okay and i'll we'll get you all something to eat here okay keep the course going and every time they turn around and said hey would you like to try the popcorn chicken today okay and the next one and this lady was really really good i said what sort of training do you guys get to do that she said training she just picked up the sign that was on top of the till that said popcorn chicken. And you had the customer facing side of it, but she turned it over and it just said three phrases. Would you like to try the popcorn chicken today? Okay. Uh, with the milkshake, we've got the special of that. We've got the Oreos thing. Would you like that with that today? And it was just three phrases there. And they said, they just tell us to do this all the time. And, and I thought about how much extra do they pay her to upsell? Uh, do they beat her up with a stick if she doesn't say it? I don't know, maybe, maybe they did. How much was she earning? Uh, she's probably not earning a, a quarter of what you can earn in the motor trade. So actually, do we have to pay big wages to get people to do what they should do? Or do you get people to want to do it? I think it's the want. 
and it's the passion. Um, you know, when we run courses, we, we, we see lots of new um, sales execs coming into the industry, uh, working for different dealer groups. And yep. it's interesting when they do the introduction of, of their background, where they've come from. Yeah. You know, what you'll find is you'll get so many of these new guys who've just got a passion for cars. Yeah. And they love cars. They want to talk about cars. And it, they couldn't get a better job. But it's you not a car it. people. It's a it's not a car business. It's a people business, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But and then you have the people who are really greedy, mm. who will sell anything. Yeah. There seems to be a real imbalance. We get a lot more car people and people people rather yeah. than the greedy people now. Um, an agency model. Mm. I work for those people because they get the chance to talk about it. But we yeah. need to try to drive that um, hunger and desire to want to better yourself and and, and create that. Um, I suppose that better lifestyle for yourself. Because back in the day, the harder you worked, the more money you earned, the better the holders you had. Well, now, for people who listen to this uh, podcast later on, we're actually recording this right at the end of June. And Car Dealer Magazine, uh, hi, James, how are you, sir? Uh, Car Dealer Magazine has just interviewed the people from Mercedes-Benz UK about agency. And he was actually talking about um, the difference between what happened in Australia and how they go wrong and how smooth the introduction of mercedes UK agency model has uh, been rolled out. But again, he, he then um, went into some of the numbers there and the amount of pre-reg vehicles, this force market, the demonstrations they're doing, they're going into that daily rental leasing place that Mercedes had to do. And the retail element would appear to be a lot lower there. Um, do people still need to be asked for the business? Now, again, the managing director of Mercedes-Benz said, ah, hold on. Because we own all the stock, we own all the demonstrations under agency. Mm. Uh, he said, of course, there's going to be a distortion there. But again, if you look at the retail numbers compared to BMW and Audi, it would appear the first quarter was not strong for Mercedes-Benz. Are, are you noticing the same thing on the at the sharp end, on the ground? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think if you look at, again, Audi's registrations um, up to the end of May were 16.8% ahead uh, of prior. And massively wow, that much? Market. Yeah, wow. huge, huge um, jump. I know BMW weren't quite as far, and I think you know mm. there's the, certainly some winds have changed and some challenges around supply still, but mm. you could really see a big difference. And it it, it will be if when we talk to I was talking to someone in Volkswagen, um, and they're watching with a bit of breath what's happening with the Mercedes Benz model mm. because they're holding back. Yeah. Um, and and do you know what? If the whole of the automotive industry in the UK turned tomorrow, um, you know, first of July, we all go to agency. Yep. I think it'd be different because mm. then the whole, but now a customer, if they go to Mercedes Benz and they get looked after and they're nice, but no one asks for the business, then they go to BMW dealership or an Audi dealership yeah. or a Volvo dealership. Mm. I can yeah. promise you now those sales execs will be asking for the business. Of course, there's so many different levels of agency as well, because what's agency for one manufacturer, another manufacturer, completely different thing. And um, again, with the Mercedes Benz in the UK, sorry for our listeners in uh, America, um, in Ireland, whatever, Mercedes UK, um, they, they were actually talking about customers are loving the approach in the main. Mm. But actually, you know what? Aren't you going to love the person that shows you all the stuff and that's beautiful and it's nice and then just go and buy it from someone else? <laughs> okay. I still think our job as a salesperson needs to say, should we secure that for you? Shall we go ahead with it? And of course, the man from Mercedes-Benz said, you know what? Um, and there are special offers that we can give to people. So it's not no haggle. Agency and no haggle is kind of two different things. It is, um, it's is—it's definitely going to be interesting. I think the, um, the tide is coming on agency. I think the manufacturers, despite what they'll say, um, they're looking at cost reductions because of EV vehicle. Um, I think that's exactly, um, and... Uh, I, again, on the podcast, um, I think um, there's been lots of people talking about that's the real issue of what's actually happening. So it's happening. I, I think we're just going to have to adapt to it. And as an investor, uh, can you actually save? Do you need that hungry salesperson? Do you need that person? Or could you actually have that person from McDonald's? Okay. Um, or that hotel industry just looks after people really well. Um, interesting one to see what happens there. It is. No, it, it really is. I, my personal beliefs, I still think we need that hungry salesperson, not sure. Mm. I think we need that person to drive that desire and build the emotion with the customer and build the rapport. And 
getting to the point where the customer won't say yes into that brand. I think there's a, a big difference between that. Yeah. And I think you, you, your hungry salesperson will push and push and push the customer's emotions along that line as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's, a, it's a difficult one. But you're right. That, that agency model, um, when you look across it, it, it is coming in varying degrees and it is coming over. And But lots of manufacturers are trying it now on the EV range only. So they're mm -hmm. introducing agency to the electric yeah. vehicle room. Uh, um, so, some would say agency by stealth. Okay, yeah. if we have to go EV by uh, 2030, um, um, yeah, it'd be interesting. But there's uh, also now, if you look also where, where the offers on the marketplace, they're all on EV. Yeah. 0% finance, deposit contributions, immediate stock delivery. So there's got to be something there as well. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting. So listen, we always like to give our listeners a takeaway. Okay. Um, you're uh, someone listening to this thinking, I need stuff. Where do we get them from? Uh, anything else you've tried or heard out there that you think, ah, that's something to, because getting quality people is what we need to do. And, oh, again, we're just talking about the sales side of it. I mean, let's not even start with technicians. Yeah. Uh, let's just leave that can of worms for another day there. But someone listening to this, looking for quality salespeople and keeping quality salespeople, anything you can do to uh, that you've heard out there? Do you know the, the best success we ever had in our businesses? Excuse me, I wonder where you're going with that, with that slip of the tongue there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the best success you were saying. The best okay. success we've ever had in, in the business uh, was growing our own. Yeah. It was really growing our own. And do you know what? When you mentor and support and coach that young person into the business and they grow up within that business and you give them the chance to develop and adapt and start that career path, they're the ones that stay. They're the ones who become not just brand ambassadors, but the business ambassadors. And they're your next senior sales execs, your next transaction managers. Um, I've got a, a, a fantastic um, friend of mine now, I'd like to call him a friend, Greg. Um, Greg starts my product genius in 2000 and I want to say 12. Mm -hmm. um, 11 years down the line, he's now the general sales manager for that big BMW site. And that growth and that retention of and the loyalty has been repaid back for everything that they've done with him. But where did Greg come from? Where was he employed to he start with? Was a, we actually got his mum bought a car from me. Yeah. And she said, my son would love to do something like this. So we said, well, give him a CV. Get him to come and talk to us. He was a German student. He'd been studying at Edinburgh. He okay. knew nothing about cars. But he just had the biggest personality you could ever So, So straight from about. education? Straight from, from education. Ed Education into it. Um, get them straight from there. Yeah. Uh, listen, I've got a, a 20 year old and a 17 year old. So they're looking at their start in the career. Um, and it, it's quite interesting. Um, my youngest one, uh, Sean, um, I, I, I almost, I'd love him to go through what I've gone through. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because what you learn in the motor trade and selling um, in anything he does for the rest of the life is absolutely going to be brilliant. But again, when I speak to him and he loves his cars, it's not even on the radar. The motor trade's not on the radar at all, yeah. um, which is interesting, isn't it? And you know, it's the same with my two children. Neither of them have even had any consideration of the automotive industry. But yeah. they say that because they say the time I spent with the family when I was coming through my career, yeah. I was always at work. So can you see now maybe where that balance of money and time comes from? Yeah. Well, listen, I just want to say thank you very much for your time. Um, here's a little offer for the listeners. If you've got to this part of the podcast, hey, we want to say thank you because you're the people that really take the time to invest in this. So here's a little thank you for you. If you got to the end of this, send me an email. Email is really simple. It's simon at Simco Training. Okay. And mention that you got to the Andrew Clark interview to the end. OK, I'm going to send you a free book. OK, uh, the words that sell cars and the motor trade, you know, the book there. Let us know where to send. Send me an email. OK, and uh, we're going to get one of those through to you just as a thank you, because you're the loyal people. OK, and Andrew, because we're speaking to the loyal people now, why don't you tell them about this open course and what we're going to cover on the sales training program? Um, we're doing first Ireland first. Uh, we're doing another one in the UK after that. It's the Irish dealers first. I think you're doing yeah, so we, we, we've really seen a, a, a strive for some training in Ireland. From and these are from the more independent. We've got one one site, maybe a Toyota site or a Mazda site, uh, where it doesn't stack up to have us in for the full team. Um, so we've, we're putting on this open course day. So we're, we're going to cover the full road to sale. We're going to look at everything that goes into selling cars. 
Um, but we're going to look at starting with the attitude, mm -hmm. uh, the right person. We're going to look at why do we need a sales process, the structure behind it. Um, the part that I love about it is that people behavior, the, you know, understanding why customers will act a certain way and actually understanding our own behavior, how we can influence that customer's journey. Um, the importance of effective qualification, uh, the static demonstration, the, the demonstration drive right the way through to the trial close, make sure it's effective, make sure we've got the right car and then getting to the negotiation close as quickly as possible at that point. And if we can package that up and, and do that and deliver on our open courses, I think we'll see some massive benefit for the industry. So and certainly you, for our PR partners. That, this is a, a pure plug, guys. So if you're still listening to this, thank you there. But so many times you might think, well, our manufacturer does our training for us. Yeah, you're right. But so often the manufacturer is so focused on product training because let's be honest, there's so much product in that modern vehicle, the electric vehicles. Let's look at all the technology. And sometimes we find the 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 sales, the soft skills, sometimes that's what's lacking. Uh, depending on your manufacturer, obviously some are great, but that's the one that's actually lacking there. So that's what that course, that's what we're going to focus about. Um, so listen, drop Andrew a, um, a line, speak to the office there. Uh, again, when you ask for that free book, we'll tell you all about it and where the dates are and what we're doing. So Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you. That just leaves me to say that all details of this episode and other episodes on the selling in the motor trade can be found on our website, simcotraining.co.uk. Go there to get a copy of our book, Words That Sell Cars. Go there to sign up to a free trial of our sales fitness online sales training program. Easiest way to get hold of me is Simon Bokert through LinkedIn.